is uh, Lewis Nicholson. He's also an MA candidate in art history and visual studies at UVic. And he's going to be talking call, uh, about a paper called The Sound of Clay, The Curious Life of the Ocarina. And I should say that uh, uh, public speaking isn't Lewis's favourite thing to do, so extra respect for him to, uh, to stand up, uh, to, to come up to the front and, and give his paper. Lewis, over to you. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, hello. Thank you uh, for having me. Um, All right, so from its beginnings thousands of years ago uh, to its mass production, ocarinas have had an extensive and astonishing existence. Um, from the people that have created them to those that listen to and play them, the meanings and associations linked to the ocarina um, have consistently fluctuated through time. Um, historically, the ocarina, like the modern ocarina you see here, is the result of thousands of years of wind instruments um, called vessel flutes, made of earthenware. Um, simplistic and sophisticated in creation, uh, ocarina is produced, is the product of an artist's manipulation of clay. Uh, they hollow the form, raise the mouthpiece, and puncture the body to form the vessel, to form the valves of the instrument. Ocarinas are works of art, sculptural if you will, um, made with the intention to communicate musical notes that can produce a complete melody if played correctly. Um, the pitch of the lowest note is established mainly by the ocarina's internal volume by the, um, and by the dim dimension of the mouthpiece, as well as the angle and strength of the player's voice or breath. Um, the most versatile ocarinas have uh, around four or five holes, finger holes, for playing up to 20 notes. Uh, they may be made of a singular chamber um, or with multiple chambers for playing more than one note simultaneously. The music made with, when an ocarina is played is dependent on its shape, size, and design. Um, who, sorry. Those who um, choose to make ocarinas must preface each placement of the clay with what sound they intend to create and what song they intend to hear. The shape and the sound of the ocarina has been um, have been found almost everywhere throughout history. Uh, some of the oldest ones discovered have been found in so, uh, throughout um, South America. Pre-Columbian clay vessel flutes were made in large numbers and in various forms, including those of animals and people. The, the one you see on the left is from Ecuador, dated between 500 BCE and 500 CE, um, and made of earthenware in the shape of a human figure wearing a hat and a necklace. The right one is from Costa Rica and was made sometime between um, 0 CE and 500 CE. Um, its earliest predecessors were made as far back as 4000 BCE in China as clay whistles um, and early versions of the Hassan, which you see here. Um, the Hassan is an egg-shaped flu, flute with usually between three and eight finger holes and was used in Han uh, Chinese Confucian principles, rituals. Uh, the standard Western ocarina, like the one that you see here and the orange one from the first slide, uh, was invented and named in about 1853 by the Italian musician Giuseppe Luigi Donati. Uh, the term ocarina derives from an Italian word meaning little goose um, and has since been applied to many other vessel flutes, like the older ones previously seen from South America. Donati transformed the symbol vessel flute, which played only a few notes, uh, into a more comprehensive instrument known as the first classical ocarina. Uh, since, it's, since this reinvention, for um, ocarinas have been used many times, such as in classical or orchestra compositions. Uh, for example, the Polish composer Krzysztof Penderecki, um, 1974, for Dream of Jacob, um, used 12 ocarinas. Um, because of his haunting soundscape created in the Dream of Jacob, the 1980 film The Shining used the Dream of Jacob in it as well. Um, from the usage of the ocarina to cl in classical music and movies, 
Um, the ocarina has become more and more prominent in contemporary popular culture. Most notably, in 1998, Nintendo, the Nintendo game The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time popularized the ocarina worldwide. Ocarina's, ocarina of Time was the first Zelda game to adapt its 2D game style into a 3D game style. Um, after its release, it, it was Nintendo's first or most popular game with around 7 million copies sold worldwide. Um, along with the ocarina being much of the music in the game, the character being played also can play the ocarina itself at the touch of a button. Um, in the game, when you play the ocarina, you travel through time, recalling the name of the game itself. Um, you can see here on the left uh, an icon of the ocarina during gameplay, and on the right is Link, the game's character, uh, being played playing the ocarina. Um, because of its newfound popularization among many people around the world, ocarinas, or more specifically the sound an ocarina can produce, became more and more accessible for those that wanted to play them. You can see here the design schematics for the 2008 app by the developer Gi Wang titled Ocarina. The Ocarina app was available on iPhone and was played by blowing into the headphone jack. Um, when played, uh, when played, one could change the tone and play a melody by using the touchscreen buttons um, that act as finger holes. Within a few, day, within a few days of its release, the Ocarina app um, became immensely popular and user-created user videos began surfacing on the internet. Thousands of videos showcase everyday users performing on their iPhone Ocarinas all over the world. The ocarina has soon become so popular among so many people that now you can either look up a video on how to make one, which is quite popular, um, or you could simply just buy one as low as $20. Um, these are some of the screenshots that I took just after simply searching ocarina on Google. Um, Today, there are multiple companies that make all kinds of different ocarinas. Through these companies, ocarinas um, are now made of many different materials, such as plastic and metal. Additionally, these, um, additionally because of its, its connection to the Zelda game, many ocarinas are designed with the game's symbols and colors on their surfaces. You can see here that today, one could get an ocarina at Walmart. Um, but one could also make an ocarina themselves simply by formally forming the clay uh, and manipulating its shape. Uh, the same material is used that was used thousands of years ago to make the exact same sound. Um, throughout many years of fluctuating meaning, this instrument has had a, a variety of adaptations as well as associations for many people. Um, it is this curious and extensive life that has made the ocarina something of a democratized art slash musical object. 